you guys, hope you guys are having a great day here at Casino Barcelona with this guy behind me. We're gonna hop into some games, hopefully they let us record. Fun trip already, already in Barcelona. Next we're going to Palermo and then we are going to Paris for the WPT. Let's get into some hands, don't wanna bore you guys. Make sure you're subscribed, let's go. Ethan and I take the first seats available at 2.5. It's a $1,000 cap, but I have to cough up 1,100 USD, which gets me a measly 955 euros after the terrible exchange rate. Trying to blend in, I immediately order a cappuccino. They'll never know I'm an American now. Getting after it right away, I look down at the bullets from the cutoff. Ethan in early position opens it up to $20, and of course, I'm gonna three bet him. I'd three bet anybody with this hand. It just so happens that it's against my friend and uh, we love this spot. I three bet him to 60, he puts in the call and we are heads up in position to a flop. The flop seems pretty good, it comes queen, jack, deuce. I'd expect him to re-raise pre with queens and jacks so when he just calls me pre, I think I have the best hand here and he checks it over to me. I'm gonna go for a standard one third pot size bet. I'm not gonna deviate away from standard play here. I put in the 45 bucks, Ethan matches my bet and we are off to the turn. The turn brings in the backdoor flush draw comes the four of clubs. Ethan checks it over to me and I jam all in. Well, it's not effectively my stack. It's only for his stack, which is 245 euros. Yes, yeah, so let's pause this video real quick. Ethan only had 245 behind on the turn. A little bit of a different game for him. He didn't expect to play. I forced him to come to Casino Barcelona. And he's playing with case money here. So if he loses this, he has to go to the ATM. How sick would that be? I get a felt Ethan and send him to the ATM. Pay those exchange rates again. When I put him in for 245, he doesn't take too long before calling and he says 10 high. So I guess he has a straight draw here and I turn over my bullets. The king of clubs comes in on the river and he turns over 10 nine of clubs. So he got there on the river with the straight and the flush and uh, 707 euros coming his way. And the worst part is I don't get to send him to the ATM. All right, this next hand's a fun one. I look down at pocket jacks from under the gun and I raise it up to $20. The big blind puts in the call. He's the only one to do so. So that means we are heads up in position somehow from under the gun. Let's see a flop. The flop comes jack nine three, bang, we flop top set. The opponent checks it over to me and I gotta get some money back from that last hand. I start out with a one third pot size bet yet again for 15 bucks. He puts in the call pretty quickly, so we like that. We like the three of diamonds on the turn even better. It fills us up, we can't lose to any straight or flush draws on the river. So when the opponent checks it over to me on the turn, I decide to get a little bit tricky. I don't know what he's calling me with on the flop if I have two of the jacks in my hand. I think a nine might call me on the turn, but fold the river. So if I'm trying to get maximum value here, let's check behind on the turn, let the opponent catch up on the river or go for a bluff. I think that's the smartest play here. I check behind and we are off to the river which comes the seven of diamonds. Seven of diamonds is kind of a mixed card. I would have preferred to see a club. That would have been the front door flush draw. I guess 10-8 now makes a straight. So hopefully he has that. But queen 10 bricks. So yeah, let's see what he does here on the river. He decides to check it over to me in flow once again. And now I'm gonna go for a two third pot size bet of $50. In hindsight, I think this is a little bit small. I need to go large here and polarize. When I check back the turn, I'm kind of saying I have ace, king, king, queen that bet the flop, check the turn, and now I'm gonna try to get a pocket pair to fold. So I think I could even go somewhere around 100 euros. That's neither here nor there. I bet out for 50 and the opponent does something tricky now. The opponent goes for the chuck raise all the way up to 210 euros. Music to my ears, I ponder for a second before looking over to his stack. He has around 550 to 600 euros in his stack. We're obviously gonna play for all of that with top boat. If he has pocket threes, so be it. Not gonna be scared of monsters in the closet. And I rip my entire stack all in. He doesn't think too long before tossing in the call. I turn over the goods. He mucks and later said he had my favorite hand, pocket sevens. Man, that's what you get for playing my favorite hand against me. It's gonna trick you on the river, give you a boat. But that's no good. We're taking on that 1.2k euro pot. Let's freaking go. All right, moving right along, I look down at 8 9 offsuit from the big blind. Player in plus one opens it up to 15. The small blind calls. I complete. We are going three ways to a flop. With 45 euros out there, the flop comes queen 10 7 with two diamonds. I have the open end straight draw, the backdoor flush draw. The action checks over the plus one position, and he decides to bet out for $40 into the 45 euro pot. 
Before I say what I do, I think a check raise here might be the most potent play. For instance, if he had one of the stronger hands in his range, like ace queen, king queen, pocket queens, going for a check raise here would be pretty strong. He'd obviously call me with those hands, but then I could blast off on the turn or the river if I don't get there. And yeah, maybe get him to fold a lot of those queen x type holdings. So I think in the future, going for the check raise might be the move. But in this spot, I just put in the call and that brings us off to the turn heads up, which comes the three of diamonds. Now gives me four diamonds, so any other diamond might give me the best hand here. I decide to check it over to him. He takes the option and checks behind, and that leads us to the river, which comes the ace of clubs. Pretty interesting card because it should favor him more than me. However, I could still have king jack. I could have the flush draw that didn't check raise the flop, and then the action checks through on the turn. So I think with just nine high here, I can put a lot of pressure on king queen, pocket jacks, queen jack, queen nine. Yeah, let's represent this ace and put some pressure on the opponent. I decided to bet out over pot here for 140 euros, really polarizing my hand, saying I have an ace or a straight or a flush. Pretty great news is when the opponent does not snap call, meaning he doesn't have ace queen or pocket queens. Instead, he goes into the tank for a while before ending up putting in the call for 140. I turn over my hands, which are obviously not good in this spot, and he turns over pocket kings. So yeah, that's a hand there that has to call. I think a fold there would be criminal from him. And uh, just unfortunate though that he had that exact hand. We're gonna lose that 400 euro pot, but uh, pretty stoked that I went for the bluff there anyways. Just to show you the type of game we're playing here at Casino Barcelona, Ethan rips it all in for 500 euros over a $25 open. Yeah, so pretty standard open here. He gets the fold and we look down at three, four of spades from the button. I put the $10 button straddle out there and the plus one opens it up to 35. Obviously, I'm putting in the call here. Three, four of spades is a pretty good hand. I'm on the button, I put in the straddle. Those are three reasons why I have to put in the call. And that leads us heads up in position to a flop, which comes ace, deuce, deuce with two diamonds. Not the best board in the world for me. He's still gonna have all of the good ace X's in his hand. I guess I have the gutter to the wheel, which is pretty great, but I would have loved to have one of those deuces be a spade. Either way though, when he bets out small, out of position for 25 euros, I'm obviously gonna put in the call. Uh, I didn't raise here, I didn't raise it up to 100 euros, I just put in the call for 25 and we are off to the turn. Turn's a bad card for me, it comes the six of clubs, but now the opponent checks it over to me. I think here he could have a lot of pocket tens, pocket nines, so maybe if I go for a bet on the turn and bet on the river, I could get him to fold. It's also possible here he's checking as a trap with some of his aces, although with two clubs and two diamonds out there, I don't really think that's a smart move. So I think pressure here on the turn and river might be the best play. Instead though, I decide to check behind with my four high, looking to see one card and one card only on the river. The dealer has listened to my inner thoughts, inner prayers, and he puts the five of spades out there. Bang, we river the straight. How's that even possible? We need one of four cards to come out there to give me the goods. And now the opponent takes up the betting lead once again. He goes for the old stop and go. And he bets out pot here for 120 euros. When the opponent bets a pot size bet, he's definitely polarizing. He says he has a missed flush draw or he has a strong ace in the spot. So I'm gonna go for maximum value here and target all of those strong aces. And I decided to raise it up to 400 euros. Maybe could have gotten a little bit more greedy and made it 500. Who knows, even rip it all in, making it look like a bluff. But when I put in the $400, he thinks for a little bit, he ends up saying donation, flicks in a chip. And just like that, I'm gonna turn over my straight he ends up mucking his cards face down, so we'll never know what he had, but uh, let me know down in the comments. Should I have gotten a little bit greedy there? I went 3x plus a little bit more, but maybe I could have just made it five or 600 or even ripped it all in. Let me know down below. Did I miss out on any value in that hand? Alright, another fun hand here against Ethan. I'm on the button this time with ace four offsuit. Ethan opens it up to $20 from the low jack and I decide to put in the call. Many reasons I'm putting in the call here. I'm on the button, Ethan's playing. We wanna mix it up and get in some hands with him. We put Mudkip on our cards and we are off to a flop which comes king five deuce with two spades. Ethan checks it over to me and I decide to check behind. He'll be incentivized to try to trap me here. We're both filming vlogs. And if he traps me in a weird spot, that's good content. So I decide to check behind on the flop, bringing in the turn card, which gives me a pair. It comes the four of hearts. Ethan checks it over to me for a second time. And even though I think I probably have the best hand at this point, 
I decided to check behind and uh, catch one of those rampage punts that everyone talks about. The river now comes to 10 of hearts and Ethan decides to bet off for $20. Not gonna be raising, but let's try to catch a punt here. Albeit it's only for 20 euros, but uh, let's put in the call. Ethan begrudgingly turns over an eight. I think I'm good. I turn over my hand and he goes for the little slow roll there and turns over the other eight for the snowman in his hand. He's gonna take down that 90 euro pot. Not the largest pot of the night, but definitely a fun one. Getting slow rolled by uh, your buddy at the table. All right, next hand, we look down at pocket threes, the crabs from the cutoff. The button puts a $10 straddle on and the action folds around to me. I raise it up to 30 euros and he puts in the call defending his button straddle. We are off to a flop which comes king, queen, nine with two spades. Not a great board for my exact hand, but pretty great for my pre-flop raising range. So when the action's on me, I bet out for 25 euros and the opponent just folds right away saying he had a nine. So yeah, pretty great there to win with a fourth pair. The opponent had me beat. I'm taking down that 67 euro pot. We are moving right along to the second to last hand of the night where I look down at pocket sixes and I open it up to 20 euros. Player on my left puts in the call and that incentivizes the cutoff to come in for a three bet all the way to 80 bucks. And I'm not going anywhere, I have pocket sixes. We can flop a set, flop quads. I'm up some money on the session and we're in Barcelona. I'm feeling good from that cappuccino. I put in the call and let's see if we can flop a set. Going heads up to the flop and it comes nine, seven, three with two clubs. So even though we did not flop a set, this is a board that probably connects a lot better with me than the cutoff. When I check it over to him, he decides to check behind bringing in the five of clubs now. I think this is a spot I could definitely be leading out on. When the opponent checks back on the flop, even if I didn't pick up a double gutter here on the turn, I think this is a board that wildly connects way better with my range than his. So I think checking here is definitely a mistake. Any four, any eight, any six, or I might even have the best hand at this point. So yeah, checking here, definitely a mistake. I don't want him to get there with king, queen and just spike a king or another club on the river. So yeah, checking here, a mistake, like I said four times already. And uh, the opponent checks behind on the turn. The river card now pairs the board. It comes the nine of diamonds. And now I go for a little bit of value. I want to get value from ace high. I don't want him to check behind. I think I have the best hand at this point. So I decide to bet out small and I make it 20 euros. You guys might say that this is a little bit too thin, but don't tell me that. I bet out for 20 euros. He puts in the call. I show my cards and he mucks. So it's possible he just put in the 20 bucks there looking to see what I had. Maybe he was a little curious. Maybe he thought his ace high was good or who knows? Maybe he had a hand like six, four or something weird like that. Either way, I'm taking in that 227 euro pot leading us off to the last hand of the night where I look down at the exact hand this time, the black variety, and I'm in the hijack. The button puts in the $10 straddle, plus one limps, and I decide to pop it up here to 40 euros, putting out four 10 euro chips, and the opponent puts in the call, leading us heads up in position to a flop, which comes ace, eight, five, all diamonds. When the opponent checks it over to me, even though I'm gonna have all the strong aces in my range, he can still have pocket eights, pocket fives, and the board's monotone, so usually I check behind on monotone boards. That's what I decide to do in this spot, and we see an eight of clubs peel off on the turn. When the opponent checks it over to me for a second time, I feel like I have the best hand in the spot. I want to get value from any 5x. I also want to get value from any flush draws. For instance, if you had king queen with the king of diamonds, yeah, we got to protect our hand, get some value. And I decided to bet out for 40 euros into the 100 euro pot. That gets a fold out of the opponent. And even though it's not a massive pot, nice to end the session on two winning notes there. And we are going to rack up our chips and head over to the cage. Exchanging them for some cold hard euros. Look at that. All right, you guys got out of that game for 12.43, a profit of 288 euros. So that's probably over 300 bucks. You'll see it on your screen here. Not a bad start to the trip. Uh, not the most exciting game. Uh, gotta be honest, the game here was not the best, but we made the most of it. We gave some money away to our buddy Ethan, but then we crawled our way back and made about 300 bucks. So. Next video you guys see should be from Paris. I'm either gonna be playing cash games or tournaments. If you guys wanna see that, be sure to hit the subscribe button. Good luck on the felt, you guys. If you guys are from Barcelona, drop a comment down below. I gotta get back out here for that uh, tournament series later on this year. I'll catch you in the next video. Peace. Thanks for watching to the end of my video. Click my head below to subscribe and stay in the loop. See you next time.